Hello and today we're playing Warcraft Rumble and we're going to be getting any unit in the game technically for free, basically one gold each and it's all thanks to the commander mini I am choosing to use which is Charlag Razor Flank, a very interesting proc where you will see by looking at my board all the characters instantly will be costing the same amount. Sometimes the cost goes to one gold, sometimes it goes to six gold, but it doesn't matter. It constantly fluctuates. As you can see, I just summoned this giant for basically nothing. He is normally six gold and I summoned him for two. And now look at this powerful wave going on the left side. Now, I'm actually going for that turret specifically. Knowing that I'm going up against Maiev, I want to leave myself with as much avenues open for my forces to go and I think if I get that turret, it's going to allow me to defeat her a lot faster. Sadly, as you can see, she's using her rogue abilities and placement with the Maiev commander to take out my units as fast as possible. So my initial force has dwindled a lot, but that is totally fine. I also have the Necromancer here, which is actually a really an amazing unit simply for the fact that it constantly summons two guards guards to protect it while it's launching some nice shadow bolts. Now as you can see Meeps is actually trying to collect resources but I'm going to collect the middle chest as fast as possible which is going to benefit me more than anybody else. As you can see he's spending a lot of resources on the left hand side to defend which is going to leave him wide open down the middle and the right to my forces that are encroaching on his territory. So I'm pretty sure I have this. I just got to keep sending a few units to the left hand side to keep him distracted and we're going to do a lot of damage to Meeps right here and I honestly am not sure if he's going to be able to clear my army do we take this yes i'm pretty sure we do take the left hand side turret and we do this could be our game right here because i don't really think meeps is going to be able to clear out this mass army unless meeps is packing some massive spells in his kit but i doubt that completely and look at that we're doing so much damage to that main base actually he does save it with my f shadow song and an undead skeleton's army on his side now as you can see i already had units going straight down the middle and i'm gonna drop this cheap giant right there on the field it is really amazing when you get to see your units that are supposed to be so expensive become so cheap and you can play so many of them on the field instantly. So as you can see, my Pyromancer there is walking all the way down there. I know Maiev is coming, but Maiev is not really that much of a problem, I would say. As you can see, Meep's main keep is so weak right now. This is going to be my main focus, dropping the Quill and the Undead Army. If he, the Quill can probably walk up or just stay long enough, we can get this hit it and we do get that victory out. That feels so good right now. And we're going to head into our next game and we're going to be facing Uchi, who's actually playing Tyrion Forgering right here. Now, as you can see here, I'm going to place my Quill Bore immediately and that giant was so cheap, I could not help it. This is also a great ohm printer. You see me immediately put my giant with my Necromancer right behind. Necromancer or the Pyromancer is actually really good because that extra range helps. Now, the reason I use the Necromancer is simply because I like having those two extra guards. That's for extra damage, plus the Necromancer to me just seems a little cooler in terms of damage. Now, that dragon is going to be a little issue, and I'd be very careful about that. Why? Because as you can see, the Tyrian Forgering and the dragon wipe my mid lane army straight out. But look at that, my forces making their way to the main base and their secondary keep. And as you can see, that giant was super cheap thanks to my commander that I was easily able to play him. Now, all I have to do is defend this. So I'm going to place right here on the back line with the Necromancer, who's going to summon two guards, and it did exactly what I wanted, distracting the dragon, and we got him out of the sky. That was the main thing I was worrying about, and look at that. We took the side keep. Now Uchi actually has to deal with two massive giants and a Necromancer. I'm going to slowly whittle him down as I send more units. I'm going to collect as much resources right here. Look at that. My Dark Iron Dwarf is going to collect those chests, and we're doing really good great right now i don't think he's going to be able to defend this but that dragon is the main issue the reason being i don't have enough range or anybody right now in range to take him out as he's actually shredding through my units we're dropping another giant here on the field he also pops an ogre but as you can see my necromancer may be on low health so i'm going to pop another one right here as you can see all my units right now are two going to drop the little undead squad sadly the dragon was in range and turned back look at that keep looking super juicy to just get hit right here giving me the victory we were withering away my enemy here like it was nothing. He was not able to handle the onslaught. And that is something I really love about this build. Compared to a lot of the other builds I do where I'm Zerg rushing, this one, I love the fact that you can just place high tier units for such cheap cost. Look at that. All Everything literally just went to one goal and we summoned out. Now, I could have summoned my golem for that one goal, but I wanted to get that chest because I saw my enemy immediately place that turn. So we're going up against another Tyrion Forgering. And one thing we have to worry about, we saw immediately he has a flame naga 
I don't know why I'm stuttering a little bit right here, but that Flame Naga is going to be very interesting to deal with. The good thing is there, my commander is dealing with him as a reigns and trap him. Oh no, she let up and that's going to be it there for my commander. We also have two core hounds coming there. I can deal with mid lane. It's not going to be a problem. My turret should easily be able to destroy that. I also know on the left hand side, I summoned the giant with the pyromancer. They should be able to get that keep because Truth Slayer, which is my enemy, automatically plays so many units. I don't think he has a lot of gold resources. He needs to recoup. And as you can see, another giant coming down the middle, going to be able to demolish them. And just like I said, we took the keep on the side, on the left-hand side. So we're going to pop that Dark Iron Dwarf and allow him to collect some resources. And we're holding off these core hounds pretty good right now. We're probably going to drop another Necromancer so we can add more to this undead army that's coming. And the, oh no, the Flame Naga is going to come and wipe this army out. I do not see them surviving. But on the bright side, as you can see here, I'm collecting the resources and more of my units on the left hand and the straight path are making the way to the enemy base and he's taking a lot of damage. He's going to have to use resources now to ensure he saves his base because I don't really have much to worry about right here. So I'm just going to keep placing on the base that's closest to him and some of them on that path. So we're going to drop our commander here. Okay, I didn't need to, but we're still going to drop him. He's going to make his way to the enemy. And as you can see here, he maybe has, I would say about 10, not even 10%, maybe 5% of his health up. He keeps dropping. That's his main unit, the Reza Naga. So we're going to drop our Dark Iron to collect that chest so we can get some more units. And then we're going to wait. We are going to wait for some extra gold right now because sadly I have high gold prices. We're going to wait for his units to go past me. And then we're just going to summon a whole bunch of them to easily go straight to his base. As you can see right here, the Flame Naga, the one we were worried about, has gone past us. And we're going to go straight to his base right here. He has nobody left as they left. And this should give us the victory right here, giving us another GG victory. Right now, my goal is to hit that silver league. I want to hit silver and hopefully get Sylvanas as my mini commander in the future. And in this next game right here, we have Maxigumo. A lot of other Tyrion Forgerings. I don't play them. I actually love Tyrion Forgering myself. I personally play a Paladin when I did play World of Warcraft. So I'm telling you right now, Paladins are always great. Plus, I have my own build, which that video will come out eventually. So I'm going to place my giant on the left-hand side, as you saw, while we're staying in the middle. Sadly, I wasn't able to get the second chest, but that's okay. So we're also placing some extra units on the right hand. The only path we have clear right now is the middle. Oh, that dragon is going to be a problem if my Pyromancer does not kill him. So I'm going to obviously place my commander down there. Now, I don't really have to worry about that. I don't, I don't actually know what that unit is called. But the Night Elf essentially came down the middle as my turret was able to deal with him. There are a lot of gold mines that are available. Sadly, right now I need six gold to purchase anything. So I don't know what I'm going to purchase. I might do the Dark Iron Dwarf or maybe just purchase another giant if needed. And we do get the turret on the left hand side, which is good. So we're going to drop the giant and head straight off to the base. This way will ensure that he is forced to avoid going for the resources and defend himself, which now is going to allow me to snowball. If you're noticing, one of the things you need to notice about this game is you need to pay very close attention to the units that your enemy chooses. And it's simple. Pay attention to what he plays. And if he has spells, you need to really use the map to your advantage. We just collected a lot of resources there. We're going to drop a nice quill bore and look at that massive ice storm from our enemy Maximo, which cleared out most of my squad. Oh man, that was a picture perfect spell. And this is why running spells or running the safe pilot is very important because having that AOE is very good. Now, if that was living bomb, that would have cleared out my entire squad, including my giants. Maximo, however, is very low. I might just summon in some units right close to him and just take him out. I don't know. Or should I summon the giant? Yeah. Let the giant, you know, take some aggro from these guys right here with the pyromancer clearing out. And we're going to drop our nice little cell skeleton squad. Hopefully they can clear it out. See that safe pilot distracted right there. I think we won the game right here. Yes, this is probably going to be GG. And that's the games for the day. You guys need to try out this awesome build.